What's going on everybody? James here from Artificial Entertainment. Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in this one, we're going to be looking at how to be able to export assets from Unreal Engine into usable file types that you can use in Blender, Maya, 3DS, whatever you, whatever software you use. But you're going to need to have the file types that are compatible for those softwares. And realistically, exporting anything from Unreal Engine is actually very easy once you know what you're working with. So what I'm gonna show you first is how to export a character from Unreal Engine and then talk about some of the principles and things to keep in mind when doing this. So I have here a tribal warrior mesh folder here that is just something that I got off the Unreal Engine marketplace. Now this does have several skeletal meshes as well as a few static meshes as well that we can use for today's demonstration. Now, for when you're exporting a skeletal mesh, generally, now one thing to keep in mind is the FBX by default is going to have no materials and no textures. It's not going to do this by default. You're going to have to do this um, kind of manually within your software. However, one thing to keep in mind is that skeletal meshes are generally made up of several different materials. As you can see here, we have the body, the armor, another armor, hair, and head. Now, these are all texture elements that have been applied and generally aren't going to apply properly within Unreal Engine. So whenever you're using characters and you're just using animation, like you're just trying to create animation on the character, I wouldn't say exporting textures is necessary by any means, because when you re-import it back into Unreal Engine for actual use in your game or your scene, you can import it right onto this character here that has all the textures and everything applied, so long as you didn't change anything within the hierarchy. So you actually don't need to re-import a new mesh, and you can just use this as your animation standard. Now, to be able to actually do the exporting part though, we're just gonna find the mesh that we want. You're gonna right click, go to asset actions, and then click on export. From here, you're just gonna find the file destination that works well for you, pick a name, and then keep it as the FBX file type. Once you click save, it's gonna bring up this menu here for XPX, FBX export compatibility. Bit of a tongue twister. Now, yours might not by default be on 2020. Yours might by default be on 2013. So I do suggest making it the most recent version if it's not, and then all of the other parts here, we can just leave and click export. So now from here, we now have an FBX that we can use and I can go to my desktop here and we can see that we now have SK Futuristic Travel Warrior all merged. Don't worry about the other stuff on the side. So we can now use this inside of Blender or whatever we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Blender and show you guys what you would get. So we have here the character fully imported and as you can see here, we've got the full skeletal mesh as well as the skeleton associated to it, allowing us to do animation. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. However, let's say that we wanted to make some changes to a static mesh, but we also wanted to see those changes with some materials applied to them as well. So I'm going to show you guys how to be able to export a static mesh as well as its materials and then apply them. Because again, with these types of meshes with super complex uh, material setups, trying to export it into another third party program that is not what it's already set up for is actually going to be a lot more difficult because you have to create essentially texture maps and then use those maps within the actual texture application and it's it's a pain but sometimes having textures is useful so let's go ahead and take a look at making a skeletal mesh into um, an fbx file and then also taking its textures and applying them so we can take a look at what it would look like in some other 3d softwares so we're back here at the Unreal Engine folder here so I'm just going to grab let's say the assault rifle what we're going to do is we're going to take the skeletal mesh right click and go to asset actions. Now we're gonna do the same thing, just go to export, but we're gonna, instead of leaving it as an FBX file, we're gonna go down to an OBJ file. Now an OBJ file is just another version of a 3D file, it's another file type, but there's usually a little bit more data associated to an OBJ file. And usually I've found that a lot of times OBJ files are going to actually also have UV unwrap information, which is very important for when you're applying textures. FBX does also have this sometimes, but I found more consistency with OBJ files. So once you have it, you can go ahead and just click save. And then to be able to get the textures, we can just open up the static mesh here. Now, one thing that's very important is you can see that this only has one material. So this means that we can easily apply this so long as it's just one material, because we then don't have to sort out 50 materials. We just have to have the one that's already applied. To. So we're just going to go up to here in the material slots, element zero, and then browse to this in our content browser, because this isn't going to be what we're going to export. We actually want to export the individual pieces pieces that make up this material. So generally in texturing or material applications, there's a few different things that get applied. Here we have the base color. We also have a roughness map and a normal map. And this is indicated by the N, the R, and the BC. Now base color is also referred to as a diffusion map. Now generally there's also like bump maps and displacement maps and specular maps and a whole bunch of other things that can be applied. But whenever you see BC on these type of objects, you're gonna basically it's safe to assume that it's base color. 
Same thing for R being roughness and N being normal. So now that we know that these are all what we need, we're going to browse to these in our content browser. And we're going to look for all of the assault rifle named textures. So we got the base color, the roughness, and the normal. So we're going to make sure these are all highlighted, right click, asset actions, and this time we're going to go bulk export. Now to be able to do this, you actually have to have a file for it to go into. So we're going to right click new folder and just go textures. And then with this applied, we can just select folder because now if I go and minimize this and we go into that folder here, now when you bring it up, it's going to have a game uh, as the first file. So we're going to open this up and then tribal warrior textures. And now we can see we have three new files, but they're Dutch TGA or Targa. This is a very common practice for texture files. So don't worry if you've never seen this before. It's actually the way it should be. You really don't want PNGs, JPEGs or things like that because TGA files generally have also where the texture is supposed to be applied. So the combination of the OBJ plus the TGA file for the textures is going to allow everything to work together very fluidly. So now we're going to go into Blender and I'm going to show you guys how to put this all together now that we have the mesh and the three materials. So I have here a new scene in Blender that I just deleted everything out. So what we're going to do is go file, import, and because we saved it as an OBJ file, we're going to go down here to where it says wavefront and then OBJ, dot OBJ in parentheses. And then we can just go to our desktop and we can see that we have the uv1.obj, internal obj, and a regular assault rifle.obj. So we're just going to take the regular sm underscore assault rifle.obj and import it. Now you might not get those additional file types. Um, this is just something that came with when I exported this. So you might get those, you might not, but you will at the very minimum get the standard obj file type. Now, once you have the mesh, we can just click on it, go to the material properties down here with the little beach ball icon. And now with this selected, the default.obj, we can go to the shading editor up here and we're just going to bring this up, kind of scroll back a little bit, and we're going to apply those materials that we just saved. So we can just go F3 to be able to bring up the search menu and then go image texture. Now we'll take one of these, click on open, go to our folder where we saved our textures. And then what we're going to do is change the base color first, open image, and then we're going to shift D to duplicate this twice. Because what this is going to do is if we now go back and open it again, it's going to bring us back to that file. So this way we don't have to go searching for it again and we can just go right to roughness scroll down a little bit and then choose this one for normal. Now, before we plug all these in, we're going to want to move them back a little bit and add something onto the normal map before we actually connect it. So off of color, we're going to want to add something called a normal map. So we're going to go F3 and then we're going to search for normal and then under vector, choose normal map. And then what we can do is just drag and drop this in the middle, put the color into color and normal into normal. Now make sure also that down here under color space, we change this to non-color. So this is no, it's just noting it that it's non-color data. Now we're going to do the same thing under the color space for the roughness map as well, making it non-color, but we're going to take the color and plug it into the roughness. And then we're going to take the color on the base color and plug it into base color. And now, as you can see, we now have some magic happening where all the textures have been applied. And here's where it gets cool. By using the normal map strength increase and decrease, you can actually change some of the reflection, the way the materials are applied. Usually going down to like all the way to zero is sometimes really good. Sometimes increasing it is necessary. It really depends on how the texture map is set up. Like for this one, I can see that there's some stretching happening in some areas that are set up for the map itself. So this is the reason why zero works better than one, because one creates some weird cinching in some areas where we can kind of change things a little bit. Now, we also can choose tangent space to object space, and we can kind of do the same thing. But as you can see, it creates a very similar issue. So it's really up to you on how you apply this. But now from here, we can go into edit mode. And, you know, like, let's say if I wanted to take off the silencer, I can just box select the silencer here, uh, which do this in uh, object or uh, x-ray mode but i'll just box it like this and then and then we can just go p separate by selection go back into object mode here and then look at that no more sounds there now it's just a short stub assault rifle right so you can make modifications like this and then re-import it back in just using these same materials now if you were looking to ensure that it imports with the materials the easiest thing to do is when you go file export fbx now the settings you're going to want to make sure to select are going to be under batch mode Make sure to change this so this way it has this and path mode also has this selected as well. So we want to embed textures and we also want to change it from auto to copy before it'll let us do that. So make sure you change it from auto to copy, select this option. What this is going to do is copy the file location for those textures and make sure it applies them when the FBX gets re-imported. Now we also want to make sure geometry is changed from normals to phase. 
armature really doesn't matter because there's no armature on this or animation so from here you can just save it and re-import it and there you go now you've taken the silencer off of your weapon now you can also piece these out in other ways as well so that way you can actually you know apply some different sort of materials or you can add things to it or whatever you want to do just keep in mind that anything you add is not going to be um like default applied to the uv map for this and what that means is that you're not going to get the same texturing you might have to make your own textures for anything that you apply but it's really not that hard if you you know once you get into it but you can take off and do a bunch of different things if you're just looking to remove pieces or separate pieces out you know make the silence or something that the player can actually just put on the gun versus having it be something that's defaulted on it you know you can piece out things this way as well and the thing that's cool is that by applying the textures you can actually see how things would look in the game as well so like we can see that there's a little bit of an issue with the how the end here is just kind of completely open so you might want to do something to close that off make it look more like a solid barrel end but you know those modifications are just done through basic modeling so that's it for today's video, guys. It's how to be able to export things into um, Blender or any other 3D software. Again, it's just using the OBJ files. By using the OBJ file, you get a lot more data and information, and then you can apply that using the .targa or TGA files that come uh, when you export any textures. And remember, you're exporting textures, not materials. You're creating the material out of the texture pieces. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please let me know in the Discord or in the comments section. Always monitoring both. And keep at the good work, guys, and stay animated.